Good morning, everybody. Um, we're about to worship the Lord, and we ask our in-house um, worshipers to not sing. Pastor will explain that a little bit later. Um, if you're joining us by streaming, join us, and the words will be on your screen. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 i want to see and welcome to Metropolitan Community Church of Albuquerque. Will you join me in prayer, please? Spirit of the living God, we are here today once again to worship and to praise and to be in your presence. I ask, O oh God, that you be with us today as we lift our spirits up in prayer, in song, in word, and mostly from being in each other's presence once again and in your presence. Bless our time together today, O oh God, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for those of you that are here today. Thank you. Uh, if you're watching on live stream, uh, welcome. And next Sunday is July 4th, and we are opening up in full. Uh, we're still kind of debating about singing with, ma if, with masks on. How many people would sing with masks on? Okay. I've called several different churches uh, and called around and, you know, reading what the experts say this week about singing is still one of the riskier things and we're not you know we're not asking people are you vaccinated or not um, so we're you know we some people don't want to get vaccinated for whatever reason and we respect that <laughs> and uh, you know we respect that if people don't want to get vaccinated so it just it kind of makes it iffy for some of some of us because we can still get the virus but we just won't get it as bad as what I understand but Anyway, July 4th, please join us and invite family and friends to come with us. Um, and also, if you could just maybe stay after just a few minutes after worship, and we'll just kind of chat like we did last Sunday, if you were here last Sunday, to kind of talk about what went well and what didn't. Um, a reminder that our annual, except for last year, yard sale is coming up the first full weekend in August, which I think is the 7th and the 8th, I think. It's 
whatever the first full weekend in August is. So please join us. If you have things to donate, you can call Andy and uh, we'll have his number available for you next Sunday. Or it's also in one of the newsletters that I sent out earlier this month. So, Okay, I think that's it for now. Thank you all so much for being here. I know it's, uh, we're still getting used to being back into the, um, into the worship space and getting into the groove. Uh, so it's, it's all new. So join us today as we go on another ad Sunday adventure. And now let us hear the reading of the word. It's a joy to bring God's word from Ecclesiastes 3, verse 9 through 16. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. God has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, God has put a sense of past and future into their minds. Yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all... In particular, a passage from the third chapter that the movie or the song Turn, Turn, Turn by the Beatles was based on. It begins... For, there is a season for everything under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die. It's a beautiful passage. And I love the book of Ecclesiastes. It's a very short book, only 12 chapters. It's an easy read. And it was written probably by uh, somebody who was coming to the end of their life. I picture them as an old curmudgeon or a crone, somebody who is withered and just has been through it all. And they're writing down their words of wisdom to pass on to the next generation. And it specifically speaks to people like Sisyphus. And it's filled with wisdom and wit and good advice. So I encourage you to read it. Now I'm going to paraphrase here uh, the part that we just heard. I've seen how hard everyone works in life. And what does all that hard work do? What does it get anyone? God has made a time for everything, and God also gave us the ability to remember the past and to dream about the future, but we still can't figure out what God is up to. So, really, the best thing we can do is take pleasure in life, be happy, enjoy yourself. Whatever God does lasts, whatever we do, not so much. And God made it this way so that the only real choice that we have is to stand in awe of God. And then we come to the last verse of the passage. That which is already has been. That which is to be already is. And God seeks out that which has gone by. For some reason, I've always been drawn to that verse. God seeks out that which has gone by. I've struggled to find out what that means, not only in, in the book and in this chapter, but also in my life. The first two lines are kind of easy to figure out. That which is already has been. Everything that exists now has existed before. In other words, there's nothing new, really. And that which is to be already is. Everything that's yet to come has its origins in the here and now. To put it all in simpler terms, the past can't be undone. The future doesn't exist yet, and so the place of power and transformation is here and now. So that makes sense. We are all a product of everything that's happened to us beforehand. But we're also free to become anything that we want. And the tipping point between those two is this present moment. And this is the only moment where we are completely free to make real change. So we have this enigmatic phrase, God seeks out that which has gone by. What does that mean? That which has gone by. Well, that's the past. It's everything that's already happened. And God seeks that out. Why? Why would God seek out the past? Why would God go after, pursue, take an interest in what's already happened. Wouldn't God be more interested in what's 
yet to be? Why would God seek out that which has gone by? As I've worked with this passage, I think it's about redemption. I think it's about you, me, and all. We are a product of everything that, it, that has happened before, but that is not the only thing. I'm a product of my past. I'm the shy young boy in the picture with the, with the blue sweater standing at the door on his first day to kindergarten. I'm also the skinny, geeky high school senior pinning a corsage on my girlfriend as we go off to the prom. And I'm the gay guy with a few extra pounds speaking to you now. All of that is a part of me. It's the sum total of everything that's come before. We're nothing more than a big old mixed up, mashed up mixture of everything that's happened. And if that were all there is, if that's where it, the story ended, we'd be stuck. We'd be a product of fate. We'd be a product of our past, like Sisyphus, pushing that rock up the hill over and over again. But that's not there, all there is. There is this God who seeks out the past. There is this presence greater than ourselves that's willing and able to go backward in time and to bring all that stuff back here to give us another shot at it. In the Jewish tradition, remembering meant to remember, to put the pieces back together again. And the Jewish festivals were doing just that. They would take the pieces of the past and they would reenact them and, and have them present in the ritual today so that they could experience the past in a new way with fresh eyes. So every single Passover was the Passover again. And they were new people. So what does Passover mean at this point in time? And what does Passover mean at this point in time? But we don't get that deep when we remember. We kind of recall the events and, and yeah, it happened. It was over there. What if we were able to kind of put it back together again and re-experience it in a new way? We're not doomed. We're not just a product of our past. We have the freedom and the ability to make choices, different choices, better choices. Just a few days ago was June 24th. It was the 48th anniversary of a deadly fire that burned through a gay bar in New Orleans called the Upstairs Lounge. It killed 32 people. The fire was intentionally set by someone pouring gasoline at the base of the stairs leading up to the bar, and the victims were trapped inside. And half of them were members of MCC, and they had just finished their worship service a few hours before. The terrible, terrible event. The Pulse Massacre. So many other episodes of gun violence, so many other things in our past that have happened. So we've got this God who seeks that stuff out and brings it to us here and now. The same way the murder of Jesus is brought to us every time we celebrate communion. And we have to ask, do we want to be the kind of people that continue to allow those things to happen? And the answer for most of us is no. But unfortunately, that's not the answer for all of us. So that means there is still work to be done. There are still other God seasons yet to come. A time to plant. A time to pluck up what has been planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love, a time to hate time for war and a time for peace. We're still in those God times. So many aspects of our life need God's healing. There's a debate going on about critical race theory, which is exactly what I'm talking about. The racism of the past has become embedded in our systems and structures and institutions today. And when we remember, when we bring that all back together, and we experience here and now, we see it through different lights, through different eyes. And then we have to ask the question, what are we going to do about it? If we're re-experiencing these things now, 
We have the freedom to make choices. What are we going to choose? What are we going to do? So what part of your life comes to your mind that needs to be redeemed? What part needs to be remembered, put back together again, but now with new eyes and new heart and new mind and new body and new perspective? And what choices might you, might you make? If nothing comes to mind, God will bring something up, I guarantee you. And when it does, you'll have a choice. You could just ignore it and eat, drink, and be happy and be merry and go on your way or not. Would you join me in prayer? Loving God, we give you thanks that we are not stuck, that we are not just a product of our past, but that you have given us free will, the ability to choose our future and to choose our paths. We don't always make the best choices, but we hope through the power of your Holy Spirit that you would guide us and enable us through the example of your son Jesus to become the people you have created us to be. In your many names we pray, amen, and God bless. This is the time for our community prayer. Um, if you have a prayer need, you wanna just raise your hand so we can just kind of, I'm sure many of us do, so. Okay, let us go before God in prayer. Loving God, we are here today as a people who truly believe in the power of prayer. And we lift up the needs of those in our congregation today, O oh God. Some of us have health issues, others are dealing with financial issues. Some are under stress. We ask, O oh God, that you touch us and just answer our prayers, perhaps not in the way that we think it should be answered, but in the way that you know is best for us. We lift up all those that are involved in the collapse of the building in Florida. We pray that you be with anybody who is still trapped and waiting to be rescued, and we pray that you be with all the first responders and with the family and friends of those that are missing and those that are injured and those that have lost their lives. Be with them, O oh God, in this time of grief and shock. We lift up, God, this church as we begin to start meeting again next Sunday. Help us, God, to be faithful to what you have called us to be and what you've called us to do in our community. May we be bold about making a statement about God's love and the power of Jesus Christ in our lives. And we ask, O oh God, that you just strengthen and renew us on this journey that we've been called to be on. May we look ahead to the future filled with hope, love, and joy. But may we always live in the present, O oh God, enjoying each and every day that has been gifted to us. And we say all this in your many names. Amen and amen.
stand before you at this altar. So many have given you more. I may not have much I can offer. Yet what I have is truly yours. This is my offering, dear Lord. This is my offering to you. God, and I will give you my life, for it's all I have to give, because you gave your life for me. This is my offering, dear Lord. This is my offering to you, God. give you my life for it's all I have to give because you gave your life for me because you gave your life for me For those that are here, you will be taking your communion with the little ones here, uh, the wafers at the small, and then the grape juice is up here. But, and if you're at home, we invite you to join with us uh, with crackers, juice, whatever you may have. And I believe that this is a meal that symbolizes the gift that Jesus Christ gave to us. So as he traveled the countryside, Jesus always invited people to come and share a meal with him. But one night, it was a little bit different. They were in Jerusalem. Some say it was the Passover. And Jesus knew his time was coming to a close there on earth. So he gathered his disciples together. And there they shared a meal together. And after they had eaten, Jesus took a piece of bread. And lifting it towards heaven, he broke it. And he said, take and eat this, all of you. This is my life, which I have shared with you. He offered it to Peter, who would deny knowing Jesus, not once, but three times. He offered it to Judas, who had already betrayed him. And he offers it to us, who truly need spiritual food for this journey that we are on. After they had received the bread, Jesus took a cup filled with the fruit of the vine, and lifting it towards heaven, he said, Take and drink this, all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. This is my love, which I have shared with you. So we take and drink from this cup, and we eat this bread, and we are forever connected with those that have gone before us, with those that are here with us now, and those that will come after us. This is a gift to you from Jesus the Christ, and I invite you to receive the bread and the fruit of the vine at this time. And may it feed and sustain your soul and nourish you as you continue on this journey of faith. Amen, and God bless you.
Hallelujah, we're going to see our God soon and very soon. We are going to see our God soon and very soon. We are going to see our God soon and very soon. We are going to see our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see our God. More crying there, we are going to see our God. No more crying there, we are going to see our God. No more crying there, we are going to see our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see our God. No more dying there, we are going. still kind of learning to do real worship and live worship with all of our real worshipers that are at home still. Uh, so if you see people running around and giving us notes and stuff, just just go with the flow, as I say. Uh, we're just getting used to this. It's a lot of fun, though. I, I, you know, who, who knew back in March when we left here that we wouldn't be back again for a year and a half? But we've all learned a lot, um, definitely learning to live stream and um, also been very grateful that we could do that. So... Uh, now it's time to go, and uh, thank you all for joining us. I hope that you will come back next Sunday, July 4th, 1030. Uh, we'll have masks for you if you want to uh, wear a mask, and we'll definitely decide about the singing within the next couple days. And uh, if you want to wear a mask and sing, it'll probably be okay, but just let me just double check one more time. I'm uh, connected with the Center for Congregational Singing, and they're kind of supposedly the experts on it, but... And I said, our people love to sing, though. That's, I mean, that's, most of us come to church because we love to sing and praise and clap our hands and welcome God. So, Pat, is this your last Sunday with us? This is... Okay. Pat is flying off to Costa Rica to be with the love of her life. I hope you don't mind me saying that, Pat, but we will miss you, and we wish you the very best in Costa Rica. Okay. <laughs> Are you going to be on 90 Day Fiancé or anything like that? You know, there's a show called 90 Day Fiancé. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right, go forth now, and I pray that your week will be filled with joy, love, laughter, and family. God bless you. Go in peace. Amen. And we'll chat in just a minute, too.